Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this episode of the Mantaflow tutorial series, we're finally going to get to actually making some simulations. We're going to use a swirling guide to create this effect in our smoke simulation and it's going to be awesome. So open up Blender, let's hop right in and see how we're going to do this. Let's start by adding in a cube to act as a domain. I'm going to hop into edit mode and scale this a bit sideways to save on space and calculation time. Then I'll go back into object mode, use F3 to pull up the search menu, and set the origin to the center of the object. Let's go to the physics menu and add it in as a gas domain. Now for our effector guide. Let's add in a NURBS circle curve, rotate it, scale a bit, and position that in the middle of the domain. Then we can press Ctrl A and select Location to move its origin back to the 3D cursor. Press Shift A and add in a cylinder. This is going to be our guide that generates the velocity for the smoke and we'll use some modifiers to make it rotate around our circle curve. Hop into edit mode, scale it so that it's pretty long and add in a bunch of edge loops with Ctrl R. Then hop out of edit mode, go over to the modifiers tab and add in a curve modifier. If you select the nerve circle we made earlier as the target curve, the cylinder will curve around it. You might have to change the axis in the curve modifier to get this to work, but long as you haven't moved your objects, you should be fine. Scale the cylinder along the z-axis to close off the loop, and scale it along the x and y axes to thicken it up. With this, you can now move the effector back and forth along the z-axis, and it will loop around the curve. That means we can throw a keyframe in at the beginning, move the cylinder, and add in another keyframe at the end of our animation, and it will spin around the circle. The last thing before we get to simulating is to add in an emitter object. I'll just put in a UV sphere and move it right into the middle of the cylinder. Now we need to add that as a flow object and make sure the type is set to inflow. Then I'll open up the flow source menu, turn the volume emission up to 1, and lower the surface emission to 1. Let's move on to the cylinder, adding it as an effector and changing its type to Guide. If you are using Blender 2.83 or later, make sure to toggle it on with that Use Effector box as well. We also need to increase the surface thickness slightly as this won't have an effect without that. Moving to the domain settings, we need to change the end frame first of all. Let's just set that to 250 and shimmy back up to the Guides menu. Toggle those on so we can have our cylinder actually do something and change the velocity source to effector. We want to leave these settings at the defaults until we see the initial simulation. It's not good to just willy nilly change things without knowing what you're going to be changing or if things need to be changed at all. So let's bake those guides and then bake the actual simulation. Once that's done, we can see if there's anything that needs to be changed. I'm going to scale down my cylinder a little and decrease the size value for my guides. I'm also going to set the velocity factor and the weight to 1. If your smoke is colliding too much with the outside of the domain, just scale that domain up a little bit. Once you've tweaked this and baked at a low resolution to make sure it looks pretty good, bump up the resolution for a final bake. I went for a res of 128. Be warned that you will have to rebake your guides to change the resolution. Once that's done, bake in some noise as well, and then we can move on to shading. Let's select our domain and assign a principled volume shader. Delete the principled BSDF and plug the volume shader into the volume output. Now the smoke should show in rendered mode. It won't look very good, and that's because we haven't changed any of our EV settings yet, or set up the scene all that well either. Open up the volume menu and lower that tile size. I'd recommend using 4 pixels for viewports and 2 pixels for renders, but of course change that depending on how it performs on your own computer. Turn on volumetric shadows as well, and up the samples there. We need to go into rendered view and add in a light, and now it actually looks kind of decent. Our node setup will be pretty simple. Let's put in a volume info node and connect the density into the density on that principal volume node. It will look a little thin and wispy, so let's also pop down a math node and set that to multiply. Now we can slide that around and we can change our smoke to be more dense. For the color, just plop down a mix RGB node and throw two colors in there. Run the density through a math node and maybe a color ramp too. 
With that combination, you can just switch the math function, and well, I mean, honestly, I don't even know what half of these do, and you can just get all sorts of funky color mixing by tweaking those two nodes. The same thing can be done to the emission too if you want some cool colors there. Math, color ramp, and some awesomeness ensues. Throw one or more multiply math nodes at the end if it's not quite bright enough yet. Now just throw a couple lights in there and put together an environment. This would probably fit in something abstract, sort of like you'd see from a Ducky 3D tutorial. Here's one I made in the early stages of working on this simulation, just as an example. It's really personal preference, so do whatever you want here. Then, just crank the settings up a bit and render out your animation with Ctrl F12. Now the next video in this series is going to go over in-depth shading for smoke simulations and liquids too if we have time. So subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell so that you don't miss that. If you want to support me extra, go check out my Patreon, that's the first link in the description. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day. Take two. The next episode in this little two The next video in this series is going to go over in-depth shading for smoke simulations and liquids too if we have time in that video. So subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell so that you don't miss that. I want to thank you all for watching. Go check out my Patreon if you feel so inclined and have a great day. The next video in this series is going to go over in-depth shading for smoke simulations, and liquids too if we have time in that video, so subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell so that you don't miss that. If you want to f- If you want to help this channel out a little bit, go check out my Patreon, that's the first link in the description. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day. The next video in the series is going to go over in-depth shading for smoke simulations, and liquids too if we have time in that video, so make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell so that you don't miss it. If you want to help out this channel a bit more, you can also check out my Patreon at the first link in the description where you can get some exclusive project files. I want to thank you all for watching, and have a great day.